Hey everyone and welcome back. I wanted to do a short overview video today talking about icons and iconography in your Canvas class. And the impetus for this video really is the fact that Canvas recently released a brand new feature that I think is pretty cool and you may not know about. This is found actually directly inside the Rich Content Editor here in Canvas. So we'll take a look at this and I'll also talk about some other options out there. Again, I present this stuff in case you're interested, in case you want to use this to help yourself out pedagogically. It may not apply to everyone out there, so probably just judging from the title of this video, you can figure out whether or not you want to use the new icon maker inside of the Rich Content Editor of Canvas. So the way you're going to get started on this is you're going to go to any page. So I'll just for the sake of the tutorial today, create a, a brand new page here. And then you're going to see this, you know, directly starting from scratch. So if you go to the rich content editor, you're going to really recognize everything else up here. Typically, you'll see new features pop up here and there. They won't always pop up in the same um, area there like in most things in the rich content editor you're going to find the tool available in two different places so you see it on the menu if you like using the men menu your option is to create a new icon or to load up your saved ones the minute you make any icons in here whatever those icons look like you're going to find those under your saved icons and if I click on that you'll see a few of the ones I created just trying to learn this tool and we're going to go through this here in a second. So those stay basically inside your course file. So once you make an icon, it's there to stay unless presumably you go in and uh, delete them. And you're going to see these are all SVG files. So the way I always navigate the Rich Content Editor is I go to this menu and you're going to see those graphics there. So they look like icons, the uh, menu item, and that's what you click on. So I'm just going to start with a new one. Now, as we get started on this, just before I get into like the real practical stuff, I just want to say a couple things about, well, what would be the purpose of icons? Icons, I like to think of these in the way that I would think of traffic signs. You know, there's like key ways in which designers have thought about designing signs. So if you see a stop sign and the color red, the uh, shape of the stop sign, the location of it, the placement of it, all those kinds of things relate to the idea that we want to protect people when they're driving and hopefully they see the stop sign. The same thing can be said of wayfinding. If you're in a museum, if you're in a city, wayfinding because of the color, the size, the icons can really help you out with a lot of things so that you can quickly find your way to a particular place, either in a building or in a city itself. And I really like to think of icons in the virtual world in very much the same way. Whether we're on Facebook or a social media site, there's a lot of work that gets done in what's called user interface and information design, um, user experience, where people just customize ways of creating apps for our cell phones and thinking about how the icons can help us navigate. I would show you some of this on my phone, but I'm using it to record the video today. So it's really important in the world of the virtual today, our technological world. And I also want to say something about accessibility. One of the things I'm going to show you here, as you see on the screen, is whenever we create something that is graphic, we always want to think about the accessibility. If it's YouTube, we want to think about captioning. In this case, we want to think about two main things, maybe three. One would be the alt text. So once I create this icon, I'm going to type in the alt text. If it's just decorative, I would click this. I think if you're using icons in your Canvas class for the purpose of wayfinding, of emphasizing stuff, it's probably not going to be a decorative icon. And it's just really important that we follow all the accessibility guidelines through the SAS, talk to Kelly and the staff there. We just want to make sure that we are very careful and make sure that any graphic element that we create in our class, regardless of video or an image or an icon in this case, is fully accessible, readable by readers, um, available to all of our students regardless of a disability or learning challenge they may have. And then we do everything within the tools given to us to make it accessible. So alt text is a must, and you'd want to enter that there. The other thing is to think about your colors. You never, in, in good design practices in online teaching, for example, want to have something that has a purple background and purple text. Anything that is textual like this, we want to think about contrast. We want to think about colors that complement each other in such a way 
that means you have white on top of black. And so any issues that maybe come up with that, again, we need to connect with Kelly and the folks at the SAS to make sure we're doing our due diligence with accessibility. I wanna say that at the onset. And then the third thing is the placement of your icons inside of pages, potentially there could be some issues, although really, um, unless it gets into the speed of the reader, you're generally protected. Um, for example, if I put icons inside of a table, it will still read inside of that table. But if there's an order to things, and if a table would maybe throw one icon off in such a way that you're worried about the order of it being read through um, an adaptive learning device for a student, then you do want to think about that and do an arrangement graphically or spatially, if you will, on the page that's going to work so that if things have to be sequential, that works even if a student is using a reader or reading it directly off, off, off of Canvas here. So very important to state that up front. And again, I think some of the reasons to use icons in your class would involve what I'm calling like wayfinding or something that allows you to very easily help your students navigate a class. As an example, for a class I'm teaching in spring, I'm trying to set up some new icons. And so these are going to be the icon set, or this is the icon set. And I might rearrange these, but I'll have my syllabus and my getting started module here, and then my weekly modules. And each of these are hyperlinked. You know that going inside of the Rich Content Editor, and we can look at that, you can always link to something external, like a YouTube video or CNN.com, or you can link to anything inside of your class, whether that's a file, a class page, a module, an assignment, a discussion, and so forth. So using the intra links and the external links is really handy, I think, for creating great wayfinding in your class. And I think a good design practice is really talking about how to use our main home page, again, which you set through the page front page tool here inside of Canvas. It's a really great way to create um, um, a good flow through the class for your students as you're thinking about when they're first starting and then progressing through your class. So that's kind of the why of why you might want to use icons. By the way, I'll show you in a bit. At the end of this video, I'll show you three alternatives to Canvas's icon maker in the Rich Content Editor. That would be Canva and a couple of other tools that you could use. These were all made in Canva. Using any of those external tools I'll show you at the end of the video will, I should say, require a little bit of work on your end that's maybe a little more complicated, but not that much. I'll show you two different options. One is typing a keyword and downloading a customized icon. Literally millions of icons are available for free. The second is using Canva and really get down into that level of design and focusing very specifically on customizing the icon with text, with numbers, um, colors, etc. So you can make your choice after today. I would say, you know, um, look for the simple solutions. If this is going to work for you and you want to use the icon maker inside of the Rich Content Editor, as I'll show you in a second here, you literally can make a custom icon in less than a minute. It's crazy fast. So let's do it. I'll show you how fast it is. So I'm going to choose my icon color. I'm just going to choose green. Uh, I'm going to choose my outline next, small, medium, large, and you kind of see the difference. So if you want a border, pick that. Then you would put your text in. So uh, let's pretend this is my syllabus icon. And we're going to then see, is there an icon to associate with this that will make sense for a syllabus as far as wayfinding or navigation in my class? I can choose the text size. So let's go for medium. And I can choose if the text is going to live, say, inside or outside or on top of the icon. And if that's the case, again, I really want to think carefully about my text color. This would not work if I chose green and I said I want my text to be in, in the middle. Look what, look what happens. It's not going to work. So what I do is go back and find a color, again, that makes it meaningful and visible to readers and to re really all viewers. And it's um, everyone out there, certainly students who work with SAS services, but it's also all of us who, as we age, struggle with different glasses and reading glasses and glare from screen. So if you could be gentle with your viewers, your students in your class, it's always, I think, to be desired just from a good design standpoint. So I'm actually going to change this to black because I don't want it to live inside because that's where I'm going to put my icon. So what I'll do is I'll go back and put this at the bottom or below. Um, and I'll just show you what it looks like. If you do bottom third, it appears here. So again, if I have a black border, 
um, I want to make sure that I you know would would move that or change the color of the text so I'll put it as below and then I could use a background color so if I want the same color to appear again that's not a very good one I could choose that let me go back and and re and alter this to white so again what I'd recommend is as you're messing with your icon initially your creation here go back and change the colors and the placement of the text the outline etc as you kind of finalize this but it doesn't take that long and now is kind of the fun part this is where you get to choose a custom image you have a few choices here I can upload an image and I'll find something here um, or actually, let me see in my course images. I know I have something. The, this is not going to be a good sample, so don't take this to heart here. But I'm just going to pick the very first thing I can find because, again, these are already icons. I want to see if I had something that was more like a, an actual. Let me just choose this, the equity logo. Okay, and then what I can do here is kind of cool. I can actually move it around a little bit. I can rotate it. I can choose square, circle, triangle, diamond, etc. I can adjust all this on the fly. Once I'm good with that, I hit save, and it's going to live there. Again, I'm, I'm not going to leave this because that looks pretty bad. It's not centered. But that shows you if you do an upload of an image. Now, if I want to delete that and change it, I'll hit delete. And again, you can do upload or course image for using your own image. If you choose either single or multicolor image, these are stock icons already provided to you inside of Canvas. The only disadvantage of this is the limitation of the number of icons. So this is why later I'll say you could either use the upload image or course image or create your own icon from scratch or download it from scratch from one of the sites I'm going to talk about as kind of the second or third options if you don't want to use Canvas's internal icon maker. So let's look at a multicolor image what is that like okay um, again I see there aren't that many my only criticism of this is there aren't enough icons but presumably over time they'll add more of these so if I want a multicolor image I would click it maybe I'm a chemist and I click that and it appears and once I'm done with that um, and we'll go back and do the alt text we don't want to forget that then I would just hit apply and it creates the icon for me now, let's say I don't want the multicolor image. Let's go back and do a single color image. And these are pretty good with background contrast. Um, so maybe here I'll choose, let's pretend I'm Mark Williams teaching a music, music class. And there's my image. And I can go up here and say, um, again, the reader, um, actually in this, you know, I haven't tested with the reader. So my curiosity is, will the reader read this syllabus text here and I can't answer that now because I'm just um, kind of testing this brand new since I just recently discovered it and said I want to try this out so I could put on here you know something like syllabus icon of music notes and use that as my alt text again we just want to make sure anything that's like this that says the word syllabus and directs students to the syllabus we got to make sure that it it is covered in all of our adaptive technologies that is used in our SAS center which are with our SAS students so if I like that if I think that's pretty good I could say all right I'm ready to go again that didn't take long and I can actually oh by the way I didn't mention that but if you want a different color for your image you know it defaulted to the black but I could choose white if I wanted to again if I don't like that maybe I say no I'll go back to black so I really encourage you to customize this as you move along and once you change an element here with the icon or the text or the border or any of the background colors or text colors go back and alter it based on what's going to look the best and what's going to um, be adaptive in terms of SAS um, issues that students would encounter. So I'm ready to go. I just click apply at the bottom and it will insert it just like any element inside of your rich content editor. So now you have your icon there. Okay, so I can go into that icon and um, this is actually kind of interesting. They allow you to go in and edit it. That's actually powerful. So it's not like a static thing that lives forever you can go back and change it which is is actually pretty cool that's that flexible I'm surprised to see that because usually you would just kind of create it and you're stuck with that and have to do a new one so that's very cool um, icon options you can uh, d just do your alt text I guess okay so that is just your opportunity for alt text and then the thing I wanted to mention too if you want to start inserting hyperlinks to use these as navigation items what you would do is just select your image and then you'll recall that I could either up here insert it or use this graphic 
um, icon driven version and click on either an external link or course link. For external link, just go to your web page like YouTube or CNN.com, paste it in there, hit done, and your link is created or inserted. Um, I can also then go in and choose a course link, which is super handy for, you know, like anything like a week one through week 11 module if you te teach 11 week class. Let me click on campus safety, okay. So this will now have that link. If I ever want to remove the link, I could click on link options. I could change it or I could remove it and then go back and start over. Now, I just want to mention if some of you want to do something like setting up a table, one of the concerns that I think could happen, whether we're talking about screen readers or just design on the page, whatever it happens to be as far as navigation for our students is, if I start to paste a few of these, I'm not going to make more than one icon. Actually, that looks pretty good. I, I don't think that's too bad. So what I could do is have all my different icons, and then I just use my tool every time I want a new icon, go to my icon maker, create it, and then it'll just insert it after the next element. Eventually with the line return, it'll you know probably do it on the next line, yeah. So I could actually totally do it this way if I wanted to, and hit save, and then what'll happen is when the students, um, this is just test navigation, I have to name it. When the students uh, click on these, these would be their navigation items. Again, they wouldn't all say syllabus. One would be course policies, one would be syllabus, etc. So I could totally see that happening. Another thing you could do, I think, is imagine this were um, a content page and not my home or front page. I could just maybe use this for emphasis. Maybe I don't have a clickable icon. Instead, what I have, and maybe I don't have a, a name on this, is I just have my image of like a globe or something. And I use it as a point of emphasis. Again, make sure you do the alt text so that it's available to all students regardless of how they're interacting with your page, including with adaptive technologies. So maybe in this case, I wouldn't have syllabus as a text. And instead, I would just have my icon and it kind of um, denotes for the student the start of the page, like a, a point of emphasis or something like this, a graphic element. So again, you could totally use an icon in that way as well. There might be other opportunities out there, like if you were teaching a geology class and you had different types of rocks and those rocks could be graphically illustrated through either an icon or an image, you could go back to the icon maker as I showed you, upload your custom image, and then you're not limited to just the icons that are available inside of the icon maker. And again, what I'm kind of getting at in my class for spring is, I want to have this sort of setup. So when a student interacts with this table, and again, I just want to emphasize, the table is readable by adaptive technologies. I've left it up, it's true, no joke. So I know someone out there said something like that, that's not true. And I just want to make, make that clear because as this stuff happens, one of the first things I do when I, when I check software is, I look into, a, how does this work? What are the best approaches from a graphic design standpoint, technological standpoint? And then what are the accessibility issues? And believe me, on every one of these technologies, I always start there and cover it. So, um, you know, definitely it's something that we have to think about. So th this is available to a screen reader if you use a table format. So to use a table format, you would just insert a table from, I'm going to click no there. Uh, from the rich content editor and let me just hit a return here and you could either go to table as you know you could choose the table size and then set that up so I did this ahead of time and then all you have to do is go inside every one of the cells and insert your icon upload it if it's in your course images if it's within the icon maker that we're looking at here then all you have to do is go into each cell and customize it and create it and you're good to go at the end of that process what you'll do is you will add that hyperlink either to an intra or an external link as we talked about earlier. So that's my approach. That is why I'm doing this. Now, since I've mentioned a few other technologies out there and available that allow you to go a little further than the icon maker inside of Canvas Rich Content Editor, let's look at those. And again, you can decide if you want to use them or not. I won't take you through all of these. I'll just mention them and you could say, hey, that looks cool. I'll check out the site that he talked about. So. The first one is Canva. Now Canva is one of the go-to graphic design tools out there. They do commercials on TV. I mean, it's, it's a really big deal, Canva. If you set up a basic free account, you don't get all the access to all the images and features, but you get a lot of them. So I definitely recommend Canva. What you do in Canva, as you see here, is you're going to create a custom size for the icon you want to make. 
And what this typically involves is you can start from scratch, you can use a template, and I'll just show you what this looks like. I'll duplicate this page here. And I'll kind of you know strip away everything. So this involves multiple elements. It involves a calendar, it involves a text element, it involves a circle, it involves um, another element there, a number, and uh, kind of a lot, right? So if you go this route, you do have to do more steps. You typically have to start with something like a background. And um, in this case, this is a custom background. You would always want to go to your elements tab. And by the way, if you want my full fledged tutorial on Canva that I did a couple years ago, check it out on the teaching and learning website or on my YouTube channel because I go through all the aspects of Canva and it's it's my favorite tool. But basically you set up all the elements yourself. One rec recommendation I have for this is be sure that you constrain the file size or um, standardize the Canva size of your Canva image because if you don't do this, if you have one that's square and one that's horizontal, when you go to the process of inserting these inside of your class, you're going to start to get some really weird funky stuff. And what's nice about using the table is when I go back to the home page here, you'll see that it really makes it look very standardized. You don't really notice that it's a table. It kind of creates, you know, this space between them. And that's because each of these is the exact same size. So when I am working in Canva, and I have my custom icons, I have to make sure that for that icon set, they're all the same size, okay? And you can reach out if you have questions about this and we can we can work on this during any of my office hours if you want. So um, again, I would insert whatever image I want here, I would insert the text, and then I save it as, let's say, a JPEG or PNG file, and then I upload it through my site. I don't actually use for these second, third, and fourth options, I don't use the icon maker that I just showed you inside of the rich content editor of Canvas. Okay, so that's option one. Uh, the most full-fledged, the most customizable is Canva. The next two are really, um, you type in a keyword and you download the file. You, you, you maybe don't have that customization. So the first one is called Flat Icon, and these are totally free to use. Mark Williams was in here today and I showed, them him, showed him this, and I said, if we type in guitar, we'll find 9,100 guitar icons. It's pretty crazy. Let's get more specific. Let me type in something like anthropology and see what pops up. I bet it's going to be thousands. Ah, oh, 400 only. Darn it, no love for anthropology, but that's still pretty good. So um, 471 icons. They actually have, um, sometimes they have sets you can download. In this case, it's individual. So what I would do is I'd find the one I like. Um, I actually don't love all these, but uh, oh, who knows? I'll just pick this skull. <laughs> and then when I click the skull, I can actually choose the format, the size, um, the type of file, etc. And um, that's pretty cool. So I can definitely just, you know, go with it. I can also maybe have some options for a different style. So if I want black and white, that's actually pretty handy. I don't have to decolorize it later. And all I do with this then is simply um, I would add it, I would download it and actually, um, let's see here. In some cases you have to set up a file or, um, uh, no, I guess I didn't have to. Well, that's, that's the actual um, um, attribution information. And then somewhere in here, I think it's just right here, I click download. Let me try that. Um, free download. Okay. So there, and there it is. So all I do then is take this icon, upload it, say, into my files tab, or even easier if you want, if you're in any side of any type of content page, all you have to do is click on the insert photo, right? And I would just upload that image and it's going to appear exactly like this one. So again, that's option three is going into um, this site, flat icon, and just typing in a keyword and downloading it. The next one is very similar. It is called the nounproject.com. I lost that. Here it is. This one I think is quite good and it has 5 million icons. You can actually go in and also search uh, for photos that are usable too. So again, there's a lot of options out there. If you don't want to use icons, if you want um, free use videos, if you want open source uh, Creative Commons images, check out my really good tutorial video on finding stock photography and stock videos um, through over 10 different sites that again I've I've learned about and tried to explain to you in that other video. So this is the same as flat icon. I'm just going to type in, let's do a comparison. We'll type in anthropology and see how we compare here. 
and 197, not as many. These I've noticed are less like color driven icons and they're they're black and white, but I think that's kind of cool. Um, I should say first, let me see what happens when I click on it. And this is actually pretty cool. You see, you get into some really like non-traditional, sometimes you get kind of hokey icons that can be a little corny. So in this case, I can actually, oh cool, I can customize this. So it actually is more customizable, at least from what I'm seeing here, than flat icons. So I can choose a background color. I can choose, is it square, rounded, or circle? So super cool. I can also flip things. I can choose an icon color that's different. If I wanna theme it according to different colors mean different things to kind of replicate wayfinding signs in buildings and around cities, this is kind of your, your go-to um, place to do that in. So I have to say Noun Project is, is really quite phenomenal. All I have to do then is click get this icon. I just have to set up a free account, which I haven't done yet, or I could easily sign up with Google. Once I do that, I download it, exact same process I would use to upload it into my class using the files tab or the uh, image tab. So you've got four options there. Again, I wanted to mainly say, hey, here's the new and, and maybe not used by, by most of you yet, um, icon maker inside of Canvas. Again, to find that, you could either go to the menu here or you could go to the menu here. Start working on your free um, customize icon, insert that in your class, use it however you might want to, and you're really good to go. Again, I challenge you to you know, spend an hour on an icon. I think it really is like a minute or two that'll take you to do something really decent and quick. And it's a feature, frankly, we needed for years in, in Canvas, and I'm glad they included it. Again, if you want to go beyond that level and customize it, your one best place to go for um, starting from scratch, kind of creating on your own, is going to be Canva. A little more learning curve. If you want to just search for an icon, you could either use Flat Icon or, I think even better, use um, the Noun Project and uh, choose on any number of uh, really millions of icons and also free photos. So I hope this is helpful and if you have any additional questions, uh, take advantage of my drop-in times, both on Zoom and in my office. They're posted just on my door here. You can also find this online on my teaching and learning website. Uh, reach out, I'd be happy to work with you on these icons or anything else that might improve any of the teaching and learning that goes on inside of your Canvas class. Or if you even have used this in a face-to-face -face class, we could sit down and talk about it. So thanks for listening and I'll be back with additional teaching and learning videos in the future.